Run it up, then run it back. Yeah. Run it up, then run it back. Run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Yeah. Run it up, Woo-hoo. then run it back. Yeah, yeah. Good morning and welcome to Run It Back. It is Tuesday. I had to make sure that was correct. Uh, this is Run It Back, and I'd like to introduce everyone. I know you're probably thinking, what's going on? Well, Sham Sharania, of course, coming from his palace in Chicago. <laughs> Lou Will and Chandler Parsons in studio. <laughs> And I look like I'm in a witness protection program, and we'll just leave it at that. (laughs) That's what's going on out here in Vegas. Uh, Yeah, you know what, guys? I wanted to talk Buffalo Bills with you, Chandler, because that was a disaster. But luckily, we're a basketball show, and we're going to get right into that because the Knicks and the Celtics were at it last night. Who are these Celtics? Uh, Celtics were dominant in the second half. Thought they had a shot there. 114-98. Tatum finished with 35-6 and 7. He had 17 in the fourth quarter. Brown, 22-5 and 6. And then you get Brunson. Drops in 26. Randall with his 25, 9, and 5. Look, Celtics 5 and 0 at home, 8 and 2 on the season. Betting favorites to win the entire thing. Best starting five in the league. And I ask you all that, Chandler, just to say, is this the best team in basketball? I think it's going to continue to change. Are they the ones I trust the most right now? Probably. You see these other teams getting off to a hot start, like the, the Minnesotas of the world, the Houstons, the Indiana Pacers are currently third in the Eastern Conference. Are they really the third best team in the Eastern Conference? No. But I think those teams are going to fizzle out. And when you look at kind of the slow start that Phoenix is getting, the slow start that Milwaukee is having, yeah, Boston Celtics right now, if I had to pick one team in the East, for sure, I'm going with them. They still got to knock off the champs. They still got to you know, beat the, 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 the Denver Nuggets in a, in a series, which is not going to be easy. But when you look at this team, it just feels like ever since Preston, this is their time. They have the arguably one of the greatest starting fives in the league. I don't trust their bench. When you look at their bench, they really just go three deep. They go Hauser, they go Pritchard, and Al Horford. I, I can't say that's a championship deep team, right? So... I like the way they started. They're home. They're 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 great at home. That's a that's an unruly environment to play. But it's so early. But yeah, sure, they they would be a top team for me. And they hadn't had any adversity yet. I still like Denver as a top team uh, for me. That'll be my vote. Is Denver? They weathered that storm with Jamal Murray being out with their hamstring injury and still looking like themselves, still playing in a great system and giving themselves an opportunity to win basketball games. And you can't say they're the best team and they're second in the East. Um, behind the Philadelphia team who's rolling. Mm -hmm. They found their second star in Tyrese Maxey. They found a groove that that really works for them. So the Celtics are in the mix, but the top team, I give them top three. Top three. All right, top three is not bad. Um, Good. We keep going with these lists and top everything Mm -hmm. because Tatum, you know, I told you he had 35 points. Right now, third best MVP odds. Chandler, I know you guys love the guy, and you, you, I think you had him as your MVP. Um, give me the argument why I should take him over Jokic, Luka, Embiid. Why? Well, again, I think it's so early that this, like last year, if you remember last year, Joel and Jokic, they were in this race back and forth where, you know, one was in the lead and one wasn't, <laughs> and then it came down to literally a, a one-on-one, a head-to-head matchup where Joel kind of dominated the Nuggets and dominated Jokic, and that kind of gave him the push. But you can argue he's got he's on the best team, he's playing a lot of games, but th- look, this can change. The minute he gets hurt and he misses a stretch or the, or the Celtics go on this four- or five-game losing streak, then we're going to be talking about the next guy who's the best guy who's currently winning. So... Winning solves everything, I think, when it really comes down to this. You're going to reward a guy that consistently won and they had a great team. And the Boston Celtics, at the end of this season, they're going to be there. And if they are there, it's because of Jason Tatum. So I think that's why he will be in that race, because they are going to win a lot of games. They are going to get to a, a top three, at least, seed in the Eastern Conference. So Tatum's going to be right there. Hard to believe we're only 10 games in here. Okay, Lou, this is a, a theme that I really want to dive into. So Porzingis had another great game against his former team. He finished with 21-6-3. The revenge narrative. Uh, For us Mm -hmm. mere mortals, we'd like to think that that is real, that you guys really do get up for playing a former team. Talk to me about that. It is. You you want to go back, you want to put on a show in front of those fans that you're used to, the fans that supported you throughout your career. And for Porzingis, that's who, you know, that's who drafted him. So every time, and it didn't work out. They didn't have a lot of success with him being there. And so him moving it on to Dallas and then finding a home in, in Boston, he's going to want to stick it to the Knicks every single time they play to prove to that fan base and prove to that organization, I was the guy this whole time. I was good enough. It took me some time, but I'm here now. I'm going to destroy you every time I run into you guys. So that's definitely a narrative. It's it, definitely a thing. For sure. And I had it happen to me twice in my career where I was drafted by Houston. I didn't want to leave Houston. I was a restricted free agent. Cuban offered me a contract in Dallas. 
Houston didn't match. So to me, I, I had this vendetta this against them where, yeah. damn, like you didn't want to pay me X amount of dollars, but then they go ahead and they sign other guys for, you know, similar amount of money. So it just kind of tells you that this team, basically at the end of the day, they didn't want you and you weren't part of their future. So as a player, as a competitor, as an athlete, you take that personally. Absolutely. And every time you go into that arena, you, 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 it kind of takes over your body that you want to prove them wrong. It's an, I feel like it's a natural human thing to want to do that. And the same thing happened to me when I went to Memphis from Dallas. They could offer me a deal. They didn't. Memphis wanted me. When I went to Dallas, I definitely got up more for that game. Yeah, look, Chandler's just driven by revenge. You know I'm here <laughs> for the pettiness. I, tit for tat, Lou, Michelle. Do you have a memory? I know, trust me, I get it. Um, do you have a team or do you remember a moment where you just were like, this is my focus? Yeah, I was just, I was, my first time going back to Philadelphia after spending seven years there was mm -hmm. really an emotional game for me. I, I think a lot of my family came. Uh, it was just one of those, it was one of those games where I really wanted to play well. Very much like Chandler mentioned, the 76ers, they offered me a deal, called me back and said, actually, deal's off the table, you're free to go, we're gonna mm -hmm. go in a different direction. So. Ooh. I, I literally didn't get a deal offered to me after spending my first seven seasons in Philadelphia. What's crazy too is even, like, it's not just the team with me. I know when I left Houston, they signed Corey Brewer and Ariza. I like hated them. When I left Dallas and I went to Memphis, they got Harrison Barnes. I had like a personal beef and I, yeah. they're the nicest guys ever. I love them now. It's hard not to take it personal. But I take, you take it as an athlete, yeah. you take it personal. We're like, damn, they wanted this guy instead of me. So you try and bust his ass for sure every time you go back there. <laughs> yeah, this is a, this is a thing. This is a big thing, Michelle. Uh, this is a, yeah, and if no. people say it's not, they're lying they're and they're lying. full it's, of it. Even like James Harden, like when he went to Brooklyn, or he, I mean, he has a lot more break Breakups than, than we had, but when you go back, you want to show out. You want, you want to prove them wrong. Absolutely. I, don't, I want on the Harden thing though. I wonder, is he the one that's mad, or should it be the teams that he left that are mad? I feel like that, they have the bigger. That's 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 the point. It's going to be everybody. Yeah. It's it's going to be a lot of emotion mad. in the building. He's probably going to want to have something to prove. He's going to want to have a great showing, and the fans are going to want to have a one up and get a win. And so <laughs> that creates great environments for great basketball. And it goes both ways, right? Like when they go to Philly this year, not only does James Harden obviously have stuff to prove, but like Tyrese Maxey's going to well, try and go everybody. off. Joel is going to try and say, "Look how much better I am without you." It's all it's all beef, Michelle. Every single time it. you leave a team. I love it. And yeah, yeah, I agree. If you think you're not fueled by that, you're a liar or yeah. you're dead inside. Either way, <laughs> um, on the New York side of things, the, the guy that we've talked about, or maybe we need to talk about a little bit more, was R.J. Barrett. He was not playing last night, had a migraine. <laughs> uh, so they're 0-3 when he's not on the floor. Um, is he not getting the amount of love that he should be getting, Chandler? I mean, we talk about everyone else, but he seems to be the piece this year so far. Yeah, he's not. And, you know, he's in an unruly market where they're going to rip him apart if he's not competing at a high level. And even this year, he is. You look at his stats. He's averaging 23-3 and three and basically 50% from the field, 50% from three, 85 from free throw. Not only is he playing level and putting up numbers, he's being efficient. And I think that's what he's struggled at throughout his career where he, he takes these long mid-range twos. He has these high, you know, four for 17 games. He hasn't been great in the playoffs. So now this year, it's kind of showing his value of how important he is. They can't win a game without him on the floor and that's just kind of how this Knicks roster I think is built right they have to be all hands on deck they have to they all be, be whole. healthy yeah. they have to be whole for them to have any sort of chance and you can see the, the glaring hole when RJ Barrett those 23 points that defense the, the way he can provide the versatility out there it's it's a huge hurt for them when he's out I love that considering last year he just got crushed every year and now it's a completely different story. Before we move on, I want you guys to tell me what exactly I'm looking at, what is going on here with Josh Hart. Um, <coughs> huh, how's that work? Play. Make it work. <laughs> you know what's crazy? I, I watched, I even <laughs> tweeted about this. This is this is so heads up. This is so crafty. I think he low-key landed and traveled before he got it off. But yeah, the, I'm the, definitely yeah. traveling in this scenario. <laughs> but the fact that he got that off, yeah. threw it off his back, then caught it and then hit the three, that was a really, really innovative. We give, we give you some love for that. Yeah, that was brilliant. Give you some love for yeah, that. Yeah, it's kind of fun. It almost looked like a glitch in the system. I like it. Uh, moving on to Cavs and Kings. Here we go. Kings defeat the Cavs 132 120. Mike Brown with his 400th win. De'Aaron Fox <laughs> finished with 28 6. Yay, welcome back. Uh, Donovan Mitchell 22 and 5. Okay, Mike Brown in his first two coaching stints with the Cavs took some heat in Lakers. Um, and now it seems to be have found his place and blossoming. What has he brought to this team, Chandler? 
Well, he's just brought this new level of excitement. He's brought the energy. You see these clips from him in practice, kind of doing the wind sprints with the team, getting on the <laughs> Turn the jets on. Yeah, he's, he's hilarious. And this guy has been the perfect guy to kind of give that city and that franchise hope. And he did that last year. Um, with low expectations and now he's got you know a year under his belt he's got these guys Fox and Sabonis they're a year older a year more mature but Mike Brown is the perfect guy for the situation with his personality with you know with defining this culture that he's bringing to there where they're tough but they also have fun and you can tell when you watch certain teams you can tell these guys they like their coach that they're playing hard for their coach they're giving it their all because they not only respect him they personally like him on a level off the court and that's so important man oh it's huge it's so like, important. You can tell guys when they're when they're they don't care and they're just there just to be there. These guys on these kids on the Sacramento Kings, they love Mike Brown and they play hard every single night. They're not gonna win every game, but they play hard every single night. I, I like the idea that they like their coach. I feel like I'm noticing that more and more when I watch the sports. Look, Lou, you got a you got a present after the game. It's a beautiful piece of furniture, mm -hmm. um, a lovely throne. I'm assuming in your house you've got 20 of these. I want you to. What my, do you think my, about my it? My home is my home is throneless. <laughs> um, but this is a this is this is interesting. Listen, I mean they are the kings. <laughs> yeah. They, they are the Sacramento Kings. So I'm gonna say this throne is appropriate, <clears throat> being as that is the kings. Any other team, if you're the Cavaliers or you're the Lakers and you get somebody a throne, it'll be a little weird. <laughs> but the Kings, it's acceptable. And this goes back to what Chandler said. They really like their coach. This is a, this, he's built culture. He's creating a working environment that these kids, they really enjoy and this team really enjoys. And so kudos to him and shout out to his 400th yeah, win. They're celebrating him on, I don't I didn't know 400 wins is like a mile. I didn't know, so. that, was a, I didn't <laughs> know that was a thing, but. <laughs> that shows you everything you need to know about how much these guys like. Coach mm -hmm. Brown and what he's doing there. Because only, what did you say, 30, 40 of those wins are in Sacramento? Only, yeah, <laughs> only about 38 of them are. Wait, what are they going to do for like the 500th win? Like, this is this is just a grand gesture. He gets a crown. Just, yeah. well, was there a crown in there, too? I don't think so. This was no, a grand had, like, gesture. A mask. This is showing yeah. him we love you, we respect you, and, and you know, congrats. We got to start getting all the pieces. We get the throne, yeah. we get the crown, then yeah. we get some armor, mm -hmm. a little I like chalice this. or something, you know. Yeah. We got to get the, every, every 100 win, we got to put a piece together. <laughs> 300 wins. Good Lord, it's going to be fun. Um, Shams, I mentioned the De'Aaron Fox of it all. Yay, he was back. Great to see him out there. Big game. I mean, how important is he to have him out there? I mean, they're, they're one of the best offenses, if not the best offense in the league with De'Aaron Fox in the lineup. And so he's flourished without Tyrese Halliburton there. They make that trade a couple years ago, and, and they built the entire program around De'Aaron Fox. They have DeMontis Sabonis. And Keegan Murray, I mean, around those three guys is really where they're building their future. And they have draft picks. They have, they have all their picks. They have, they, have, they have multiple assets, salaries, where I think they're going to be a player over the next several years. If they want to bring in another star player, bring in another player with those three guys, they have the ability to be competitive in that space. But clearly, they built the entire program around De'Aaron Fox, and he's, he's risen. And, and <coughs> what he's doing on a daily basis, you can see he's learning. He's shooting the ball better. He's getting to his spots. And he came back from this. It was close to a grade two ankle sprain from what I'm told. He came mm. back in just over two weeks. So this is a guy that has shown over his career. Last year in the playoffs, he plays through a fracture in his finger against the Warriors. And now coming back from really what was close to a grade two ankle sprain in just over two weeks. This is a guy, De'Aaron Fox, that loves to play. He heals like a Wolverine. Hmm. Isn't that nice? <laughs> he heals like a Wolverine. <laughs> I know. That's awesome. Quite the talent. Um, Bulls and the Bucks. There you go. Uh, Giannis, it just, you know, dominates. 118, 109, 35 points, 11 rebounds. Vucevic finishes with 26 oh and 12. Oh, my God. Look at this Look, pass. This, this is That's this one is of the dumb. craziest passes. Uh, That's Giannis, one of, like, the best passes yeah. I've ever seen. I'm sorry, Michelle. Go ahead. Ever? Ever seen? Ever wow. seen. That's the actually mid seen 360 a lot. turn okay. back around yeah, that was and throw a dime. <clears throat> Shout out to Debo. Yeah, I kind of like that. Yeah. <laughs> um... Can we talk about the score? 54, 35, and 35 in his last three games mm. Giannis has had. Um, obviously, he's going to dominate. He's a former MVP. But it, is this the key, Chandler? Is there something else this Bucks team is going to need to figure out? 
Yeah, there's two other things they got to figure out. They got to figure out the Dame Lillard issues, and they got to get Chris Middleton going. I'm looking at the stat sheet. Chris Middleton's taking ten shots. That's just that's just not what I'm used to. It's not what they need. He's got to find a way to get aggressive. I know he's not playing the most minutes, but he's playing 19 minutes right. last night. He, they still got a way to get him going because Giannis is almost like he's the joker to this team, right? His business as usual. He's gonna put his numbers. He's gonna get going. He's gonna have huge games like he like he has been having. He, they're gonna, and no doubt we're gonna get to the Dame thing. He's gonna figure it out. But to me, Chris Middleton's so important to this team. I'd love to see him get back to that closing player, more aggressive, off the block, knocking down shots. You would imagine with the way this offense is now set up, with Dame spacing the floor, with Giannis attacking, he's gonna get more wide open looks than he ever has in his career. So I think he's extremely key to their success this year. Yep, yeah, and they got a, it's a clear pecking order in Milwaukee. You know, even with Dame struggles, Giannis says, look, I'll just take over. I'll play great basketball for this. For this organization and I'll carry us. And I think I think Chris Middleton is in that place where he's seen success at the top. He's seen success all the way at the top and he's had those championship runs. And then you kind of get into that low where the regular seasons are not as interesting to you anymore. Mm -hmm. You're ready to play some real basketball. And so that's the only thing that I'm seeing from Chris Middleton. I think he's just coasting right now. Dealt with some injuries early on. He's just coasting through getting ready for the real basketball. Yeah, the minutes restriction. I think he's topped out at 21 in the games that he's played. So Which, by the way, is awful, right? Because you're now, then you're forcing shots that you normally wouldn't uh, force. You're seeing guys go to the scores table. Right when he does hit one or two jumpers in a row, he's getting in a rhythm. He knows he's coming out. So mm -hmm. I went through this in the last five years of my career. Minutes restrictions, it, they're horrible. You have to do it to prolong your season, to prolong your career. But it is really a tough thing to get going offensively and find that rhythm knowing you're only playing like four to six minute segments. It sucks. Right. It's just lingering that you're coming out at some point. All right, so let's talk about Dame Lillard because here's what's going on. He did miss the two games with the calf injury, um, but the shooting for him, it's the worst in his career so far. 37% uh, from the field, 27% from three. He's 33 years old. Um, is this just a, a simple matter of new place, got to figure it out, or should we be a little more no, concerned? No, it's, it's a new gym. It's a new gym. We're going we're gonna to give Dame <laughs> some, some leeway because I, feel, I confidently feel like he's going to get this thing going. And calf injuries are difficult. You know, when you deal with a calf, you're talking about your explosiveness off the ground. You're talking about constantly shooting, lifting, trying to get through that. So he still have, probably has some worries there, probably not as confident in his, in his leg as he usually is. So as the season goes on, I think he gets this right. Yeah, and this is this is Dame Willard. If Steph Curry didn't exist, we're talking about this guy's arguably the greatest shooter of all time. He, it's I'm a new not, gym, man. He's Let's chalk it up to a new gym. He's getting his feet wet. He's figuring it out. You can even see the way he's playing. With, other than that first game where he had that look in his eye like he did in Portland where he took over, he's he's trying mm -hmm. to figure out ro his role and, and when. It's almost like the Clippers situation where it's not just – you don't just throw the ball out there and, this, and it work. It takes time. It takes reps. There's offensive systems. There's plays. You don't want to step in any toes being the new guy with an MVP like Giannis there he knows Chris Milton's coming off an injury he's also trying to get him going so this is the probably the guy I'm worried about the least in the entire his first time in a decade he's probably been considered the b-side guy right you yeah, know he's so, option two yeah he's option he's option two right now when he can uh, a lot of nights he can be option one but you know I think I think he figures it out I like that option two Shams Bucks missing a big guy last night what's the latest on Jay Crowder yeah, this is unfortunate. Adductor and abdominal tears. He's going to be out two months, and this is key, a uh, key loss Oof. because to, uh, twofold. This is a Bucks team that's still searching for its identity, and so to lose Jay Crowder, he's third highest minutes played so far on this team. He's averaged eight points, five rebounds, 52% from three-point range. So this is a team that's trying to search for its proper rotations, its identity, and now Jay Crowder mm -hmm. has been a big part of that. He's out for two months, and he's played – a lot of minutes because they've gone to a minutes restriction for Chris Middleton. He's been in, a, in, in and out of, of playing in moments. He's been benched a couple times. So like Chandler said, he's got to find a rhythm, but no Jay Crowder for at least the next two months. Not to mention, this is already a team that's struggling defensively, and this is what Jay Crowder does, right? So not only do you want to unload the, the, you know, these guys getting offensive struggles, it's because they're obviously probably focused on the defensive end too. Now losing Jay Crowder, it takes an ownership of now Connaughton, Beasley, these other guys that they have to start locking up to let these other guys rock on the offensive end. It's getting interesting. And two months, that, that's, that sucks. Two months is a long time. Guys, we're taking a quick break. When we come back from the hot Houston Rockets team, Jamari, Jabari Smith Jr. joins us next on Run It Back. Are you getting fan art already? Run it up. Lit. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Run it back. Run it up. 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 Run it back. Run it back. 
Got to get it in. Does to Smith. Jabari for three and the win. Yeah! A star is born. Well, I mean, the intro was right there. Jabari Smith Jr. joins us right now. The reactions from teammates, perfect. We have three Rockets in the house, Shams. I feel like you and I are sort of left out on the Houston connection, but we're going to we're gonna try to make it work, Jabari. Um, your team is on a hot streak. Six straight, you've beaten Denver. You've beaten people that you're like, okay, this is surprising to some, maybe not to you guys. What has been the key so far to the hot start? Um, just togetherness, you know what I'm saying? Like, we just coming out with that with that fight. You know, we lost a lot of games last year. And, and bringing in Coach uh, Coach Udoka, like, he just don't like to lose. You know what I'm saying? That was his biggest thing. Like, play to win, play for each other, and um, that's what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? It's working out for us. Jabari, like you said, Ime Udoka, first year as head coach. What's the biggest thing he's brought to this team and this organization, you guys as a group? Um, I would say just culture, you know, like everybody knows how he is as a person and how, how serious he is and how, and just his approach to the game, his competitive and his competitiveness. So I feel like he's just bringing that to us, you know, with the guys he brought in, like, uh, Dylan Brooks and, and, and Fred Van Vliet, just their demeanor and their, how they, how they go about the game. You know what I'm saying? It's just rubbing off on everybody else. And it's just, it's just working. What's the biggest difference been from last season under Steven Silas and, and this year with Ime Udoka? Um, biggest difference. I would say just it's not as much looseness. You know, I, I would say I would say it's a lot more a lot more strict, a lot more um I'm trying to look for the right word. Structure, I would say. <clears throat> structure, structure, accountability. Um, a lot more of that, you know what I'm saying? And that comes with, with, with veterans and, and taking the pressure off of the coach a little bit, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, um with all of that coming in and just 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 helping, you know, just make it easier for everybody. Bar, you now got a year under your belt learning what the NBA game is like, finding out what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are. Over this summer, I know you've worked on your game, you've built on your game. What's the difference between um, your game this season and how it was last? Um, this season, I feel like I'm just a lot more sure, you know what I'm saying? Um, I, think, I think everything was, was there, but I just think I was just a lot unsure and, and still had stuff to tighten up. So I just wanted to focus on like my hand for being able to take bumps. It's getting a lot stronger, being able to guard more positions. Um, and, and, and it was just a confidence thing for me, you know what I'm saying? Just going into it, I just wanted to go into the season confident, uh, get back to myself and just trust my work. You know what I'm saying? A lot of hours in the gym, and I just wanted to trust that and just get back to me. Jabari, like you said, you got added, added a lot more vets, a lot of <laughs> talent this offseason. So how much pressure, how much motivation do you feel on a nightly basis to bring it? Otherwise, you could lose your minutes. Like, Ime Udoka, new coach here, he doesn't know all the young guys. So how, do you, how, how much pressure, how much expectations do you feel? Um, I feel like it's more pressure on myself than anything. You know, I, I feel like I bring the pressure to myself just off of, off of expectation, off of just not wanting to lose. You know what I'm saying? I'm not no loser. Um, I don't feel like so. Just going into it, just playing with that with that fight, and it just everybody's competing, everybody's everybody's working to the same thing. So, you know, with back with with, with people playing behind me like Tari and, and learning from Jeff, it's like you always know they're behind you, you always know they got your back. So it's not like a people take your minutes type of thing. It's just like a learn and grow together type of thing. I feel like I'm kind of glad you brought up the fact you're, you're not a loser. I'll go ahead and tell you that right now. Uh, <laughs> you appeared in a state championship, you know, SEC championship with Auburn, and then you get to the league, and you're on a young Houston Rockets team that doesn't win a lot of games. So for you, that sort of mental roller coaster, how, how did you take that? What did you learn from it, and how do you learn from it? Um, It was tough, honestly. You know, I, I, I'll be sitting here lining your face if I say I just took it like a champ and I was all smiles and knew how to handle it. You know, it was, it was real tough on me at first. You know, it was a lot of days where – I didn't want to go to practice. A lot of days I didn't want to play. It was a lot of, a lot of that, you know. And I just had to had to find a, find that spark, you know what I mean? Find find why I play the game, why I love the game, and just 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 get back to having fun with it, you know. Because the the record and the and the losses can get to you, you know. It can get repetitive. It can get it can get tough, you know. what I'm saying I don't know if y'all been on losing teams or not, but you know, it's, it's absolutely you know that man. It's a grind. It's a, it's it's tough, you know what I'm saying. So just just finding. Leaning on your brothers, leaning on your teammates, because you know they're the only ones going through it with you. So that's kind of what I, what I did, and just just get closer to family and just know why you play the game. You know what I'm saying? Just just 
play for the love of it. Uh, try not to look at your record a lot and just go out there and do what you can. You know what I'm saying? Play to win. Jabari, the Rockets added some vets to that locker room, to that team this summer, one of them being Dylan Brooks, who's become a real thing, to say the least. Uh, <laughs> what's, uh, what's been your experience playing with him from an outsider looking in with him last year in Memphis to now, you know, being in that locker room with you? Man, I love Dylan. You know, like, people <laughs> people can stay what they want from, like, looking outside of it, but I feel like everybody who's played with him would probably say the same thing. Like, just somebody you love to play with. Like, somebody who don't care about getting the ball, like, he just just playing to win. Like he just play hard. Like even in practice, like he play like his game seven. Like he just it's just something that that trickles down to everybody. You know that everybody can like feed off of. Like they see how see how hard he playing, seeing how much he talking, seeing just the edge he playing with. It just kind of kind of goes to everybody. You know what I'm saying? And he 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 own you like all the time. <laughs> just a rotation. He gonna let you know you miss a pass. He gonna let you know like, and that's kind of what you need. You know what I mean? Not kind of it is what you need. You need you need Veterans like that, you need people who are not scared to speak up and they can uh, show by their, lead by their actions, you know what I'm saying? Because he don't take no plays off. He don't own up to his mistakes. He just just playing to win, you know. Um, he got a lot of other stuff to come with him, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, it worked. So be, honest, it. so be honest, you're saying you're feeding off the things he's doing, things he's saying. As a young guy, what do you think of when he said he's going to lock up LeBron? Does that, does that motivate you to get his back more? Or are you yeah, like, I'm with him. We finna oh, lock him up. Oh, shit. He just poked the bear. <laughs> I'm with him. We finna lock him up. Let's go. I'm with it. Like, you know what I'm saying? When he say that, like, he just he just fired me up. Like, yeah, we got LeBron. Let's lock him up. Like, we ain't finna go into it. Like, we finna just let him come in here and do what he do. Like, nah, that's what you're supposed to say. What are you supposed to say? Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I'm with it. Speaking of LeBron, man, you guys were joking last year about him being old, being as that he played against your, your, your dad. And I don't know what yeah. that say about me because I also played against, I also played against <laughs> your dad. Um, who, has, who has better LeBron stories at this point, you or Pops? Um, I'll say Pops got the best one. You know, Pops seen him when he first, first stepped foot in the league. You know, like his first game, it was against Pop. So I feel like he's seen him from the jump. And he always said, like, when he seen him play, he was just like, he knew, you know, nobody know how true that is. But, you know, he's seen it. When he, when he said he's seen him play, he said he knew. But, uh, I mean, I think I might got a better story. I mean, first time playing against him in L.A., he had 48. <laughs> <laughs> My matchup, you see on the screen before the game, matchup, Smith Jr., James. Mm. He ended up with 48, season high in, the, in crypto. He hit all the threes, like. I don't know. I think my story might be a little better. <laughs> with my dad, with, with my dad sitting in front row, so he can see all of all, oh, all, 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 all of the whooping yeah. I got. That's forty eight. A lot. Okay. This this next one's close to my heart. Um, you picked up some yoga in the off season, and there's video of you like you're in a room. I mean, these rooms for anyone who hasn't done it, it's just a bunch of people, dude. You're just Dang. popping up in a wheel like it's nothing. No one else is doing it around you, and they're not six eleven either. How, how have you loved it? Have you found that this has become sort of addictive for you? Yeah, when I first did it, it was so challenging, and I'm seeing the people around me, seeing older people just breeze through it, and like I'm like I mean I'm in there like laying down, like about to die almost. Like I need to step out. <laughs> So it was like, I liked it. Like it was like a challenge. And like as I kept doing it, I felt my body like I felt I felt my body get more like flexible. Um, I wasn't getting sore as much. And you know, like when when you do it for a long time and you stop doing it, like you can feel the difference. Like you can feel like, you know, you get tighter a little bit. Like you can feel it. I kind of like just fell in love with it just off the fact that it was challenging. You know, like it was like a a grind going in there. I wanted to see if I could if I could keep up with. The, the person the the person who been teaching the class or I could, or, or if I could keep up it was like competitive to me and I knew it was benefiting me so it was like just something new to do you know and it was like a uh, to help with breathing and stuff there's a lot of benefits to it as Heck as y'all yeah. know preach Jabari I love it <laughs> my favorite <laughs> Sorry, Shams. Jabari, er earlier this season you went up against Bigger Roman Yama. What was that experience like? Like, how does that compare to any experience you've ever had playing basketball? Uh, it's different, you know, just how tall he is. Like, he just, just, I don't think people really understand how much space he takes up. Like, he just, like, even, like, he can be at the nail and his man on the wing, like, he's, he's like, he got both of them. Like, it's like, his arm's so long, he take up so much space. Like, it's just, it's just tough. And, and, and as y'all know, he can shoot over anybody, so it's not like he can test his shot. It's just, um, 
it's just tough. You just take up so much space, you know. Like I tried to walk <laughs> two or three. I'm talking about he looked like he got two feet in the paint. He tipped, and I'm like, whoa. Like, it's just, <laughs> it's just stuff like that. Like you really can't, you really can't teach. You really can't get. Like it's just, it's just alien. You know what I'm saying? Like some people say, you know, he he young, he gonna figure it out. But you know, it's it was tough. Just real tall, a lot of skill, and and he got a great coach with him. So. Great teammates, so he's playing the game the right way. You know, it's going to work out for him. You mentioned that game against LeBron. Uh, everybody has their coming to the NBA moment, right? Was was that one mm-hmm. of them, or do you have something that happened before in your career? You're like, man, this is different. Uh, I think mine, personally, <laughs> was the second game of the season. We played the Bucks, And um, yeah, he, and Giannis was my matchup on the board. I said, I'm Smith Jr. <laughs> I'm going into it, excited. People uh, coming out of the draft, people saying I'm a defender, woo woo, people making it a big deal, all of that. Nah, he probably had 40, probably, <laughs> probably like, <laughs> he was probably like 16 for 18 from the field. Like, it was like, nah, it wasn't. Make yeah, you think everything, first. don't it? <laughs> man, I'm, I'm in the locker room, like, man, where y'all was at? Like, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, I, I, I think that was my first welcome to the NBA moment. Like, just just playing Giannis and seeing how hard he play. You know, you think superstar, you think, you know, chill, buckets, whatever, but like he crashing, like he like he 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 was a he, he was a problem, you know what I'm saying? And then later in the season we got to play him again and I felt like I was more ready for it. And it was just I feel like that was my first welcome to the NBA moment though, Giannis, the second game of the season last year. And that was that home opener, so it was it was crazy. Mm, I got ripped three times in a row my rookie year. Rip? Rip three times in a row. Brevin Knight, pick me up full oh. court. Rip me, lay up. Rip me, lay up. I almost get to half court. Rip me again. They subbed me out. Allen Iverson said, damn, man, I meant to tell you he got quick hands. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny, Jabbar? You talk about when you see the name on the board. That's like I had it. It said Parsons-Bryant when we played the Lakers. And I'm just like, I'm like, I'm like taking Mm-mm. a picture, sending it to my boys. Like, yo, I'm really about yeah. to guard Kobe. It's just crazy how it comes at you. You watch these dudes your whole life, right? And then you get mashed up with them. It's the craziest feeling ever. And he's thinking on the other side, he don't care about none of that. Oh, he he's trying to say, I'm about to bust That's this white boy's <laughs> ass. Uh, he's, aff- he's, a, he's offended I was guarding him, Jabari. <laughs> I'm sure that's how they took it. It's <laughs> amazing. Hey. Um, so the in-season tournament continues tonight. Yay, courts. Um, you guys beat the Pelicans <laughs> yay, in your first court. one. I know, yay, courts. Those courts Look, the, suck. I mean, it's it's some of them do. The, the all reds are, are rough. How are you guys approaching it? And when they came to you and told you about this whole format, was the $500,000, did that get your interest up a little bit at all? Uh, yeah. I think you got my interest <laughs> up. Might not get somebody into it. Might not get some people interested up, people like Lou and stuff, but it no. definitely got my interest up. No, I would love that 500 k <laughs> especially going to Vegas. I'm going to leave half of it there. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it's, it, it's great, though, just like the playoff environment. And they told us it was like just an opportunity to make, to, to win a champ, win a, not a championship, but a, win something, you know what I'm saying, plan for something. And uh, just the, and you can feel the playoff environment in it. You know, the courts make it kind of unserious. I think the courts is too much. Hmm. But um, but it's definitely like it, it. It definitely gives like the playoff feel, like in the, in the arenas, and and you can feel it. Like it's just you see on NBA app and say in season tournament. Like it's just different. You know what I mean? It's just I think it's a great addition. I think it's gonna work out great. Yeah, I think I think it's kind of a cool addition. And you know what? If we hate it, we hate it. But so far, it's good. You guys get the Clippers on Friday for your for your next in season tournament. A, a team that is, well, it's something. Um, when the scouting report on this Clippers, this version with Harden, how are you guys going into that one? Um, I'm sure we'll talk about it today, you know, um, but I think it's just, you know, it's just, just, just worry about us. You know what I'm saying? Not focus on them too much. Just see what areas we can improve in and see if we can come out with that same fighting energy that we've had these last, these last six games or seven games and just, just, just see, can we put a whole, a, a, a full game together on the road? You know, all these games have been at home, so it's our test to go on the road and see can we do it in L.A., you know what I'm saying, in, in, in the bright lights and just just focus on us. You know, we're not going to go into it focusing on them too much. Just um, go into it, focus on us, see if we can improve and hopefully come out with it. Jabari, you obviously got drafted third overall to Houston. There was some chatter that night 
is he going one? Is he going two? Were you expecting to go number one that night to Orlando? Uh, definitely. You know, I definitely thought I was um, going to go number one. I thought my workout went good. I thought my meeting went good, everything like that. And um, I thought I was going to go number one. And I thought I was going to go number two. And then it was just, you know, just got me a little welcome to the NBA moment right there. You know what I'm saying? How 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 much of a business it is and how much, how, how you can't take it personally. You know, they, they picked who they wanted and, you know, you can't really think about it too much. But, you know, definitely had a chip on your shoulder and all of that. But, you know, it's not something I really think about too much. But in the moment, I was definitely, like, in awe. And, like, it was just a, a, a crazy experience just because you got so much emotion, right? Right. Because you don't get – because I thought I was going to go one, thought I was going to go two. Am I going to go three? Like, that's what <laughs> I'm thinking. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it was just – it was just a lot going through my head, but 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 when my name got called, everything left my body. Like it was just mm-hmm. you know achieve my lifelong dream. So. so so now obviously this happens. So when you do play against Orlando or you do play against Oklahoma City, do you have yeah. extra fuel playing against Paolo <laughs> and Chet, who went one and uh, two? Oh, for sure. You know, it's just always that. You know, we always been been like you know always in that top five range of high school. So I think the competitiveness is, is just mutual. Like just growing up, you know, and just competing against each other. You know, uh, so it's just always there. You know, just going. Just, just going into the game ready, ready to compete, ready to um, prove people wrong. You know what I'm saying? And I'm sure they're trying to prove people right when they play against me. So, you know, it's just a, it's a mutual competitiveness. Jabari, the other team in town, the Texans, are, are surprising some folks in the NFL winning some games that people are thinking they have no business uh, winning so far. But they did lose to Atlanta, and you did troll them. And then you took <laughs> some heat. Did you learn any lessons uh, about trolling about football in the great state of Texas? <laughs> Nah, I ain't learned no lessons. I'm going to troll if we beat him again. You know what I'm saying? That's what I mean. I'm, I'm a Falcons fan. I don't care who get mad at it. Yeah, stay nah, on it. I don't care who get mad at it. But it's like, it's like you can't get, you know, if they would have won, I probably would have got something from it. You know what I'm saying? So it's just both ways, you know? So, nah, but the Texans are good. CJ Stroud, he can go. Like, he, oh. can, like, he can. He can go. Tank Bell, all of them. Like, they got, they got a good thing going over there. So, you know? I can say that's how does my it work? <laughs> Like, how does that work if you guys are both young stars in the same city? Like, do, do you cross paths? I mean, I know your season sort of overlap, but how does that work? Um, he was actually just at the Lakers game we had. You know, he shot, like, the first shot or something. So I got to say what's up to him and just tell him to keep going, keep doing what you're doing. Like, like I know the city had before him because I know the Texas ain't been good. I know they probably already <laughs> mad I said that, but the Texas, ain't, the Texas, ain't, been, Texas ain't been good. And um, I know – and it's just give them hope, you know what I'm saying? They're, what, five and four right now, four and four, yeah. something like that. So, yep. um, you know, they, they headed in the right direction. They got they got a, a, a great player, a great leader to uh, uh, lead them to that. Man, Houston sports on a hot streak right now. Jabari Smith, Jr., we appreciate the time. Best of luck the rest of the way. Also, nice art behind you. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> That's good stuff. <laughs> Guys, we'll be right back when we come back. Isaiah said something else about MJ. Yay! We'll talk about that. <laughs> yeah, kicking things off with a little you buying that Tyrese Halliburton is first up, Chandler. He had this to say about the in season tournament quote I think the greatest incentive for everybody to do it would be an automatic playoff bid. <laughs> Chandler, you buying that? <laughs> Why are you laughing? No, it's just, a, it's, it's, it's impossible. You're, right. You're going to reward a team 15 games into the season that they are like automatic it. playoff. But what if they trade half that team away before the deadline? What <laughs> if uh, it just doesn't make sense? You could win five games or six games, whatever it is, to win it all and, and then go and, and just win this play-in tournament. Since when is 82-game season and winning a championship not enough? I understand he's saying that this could get the players to play hard and this would motivate them if, if it's like a, a younger team that wants to play in the postseason, <laughs> but this is physically impossible. It'll never happen, so I'm not buying it. Yeah, that's it. This It's too early in the season. This tournament is going to be done in December. You're still going to have four months of basketball to play. So to have a playoff bid in December, impossible. <laughs> Great in theory. Great in uh, theory. Yeah. 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 The I'm idea of, it. like, the Pistons winning this and then resting till, until resting the postseason, the, yeah. adding some pieces it. and then, like, winning the NBA championship would be – so good. Yeah, not bad. I like it. He's thinking outside the box. It's, I, I like where he's going with that. All right, Lou, you're up. Isaiah Thomas said he didn't know that he and Michael Jordan had beef until Cap. the last dance documented. <laughs> Doesn't even make sense. Cap. 
I know no. that they, I've known they've had beef since I was 12 years old. My, <laughs> like, come, my wife come on. knows they have beef. Everybody she doesn't even knows follow. they have beef. We are not buying that Zeke. Why? Why is he saying that? I don't know. You know, Zeke. I don't know. Why is he like saying that? Like he's it? belittling it. Like he's making it like it's not an issue. It's no, not like he thinks about me. We have talking points. MJ being, MJ being the guy in Chicago. You being from Chicago. Detroit beating the Bulls until Michael Jordan finally gets over the hump, learns how to weight train, gets stronger in order to beat you guys. You being left off of the dream team. We have so many talking points and so many things we can reference to this beef. I am not buying. You called him an asshole yourself, Zeke. <laughs> We're not buying. Yeah, I'm well said. That's he knows. Okay, perfect. He All knows. Right, we um, know. Everyone knows. Everybody knows. Chandler Pelicans have lost five straight. Uh, they're now four and six on the season. Zion Williamson said that he's trying his best to buy into the Pelican system right now. Are you buying that? Well, this interview, <laughs> watching it, it's like he was talking, but I could just tell it didn't mean a word he was saying. So, no, I'm not buying it. I think he's frustrated. Again, I think he's saying the right things while actually not believing it. He's probably pissed off. He's Everything he's went through with his injuries and things, and now he's mm. finally healthy and he's playing. He's still got these restrictions, and they're not winning. And So, no, I mean, I, I, it's smart to say. I, I, if you showed the clip, he clearly is pissed off, and he's not really meaning what he's saying. So that's why I'm not buying it, because he's just kind of saying the right things publicly. But no, nah, he's frustrated. I'm not buying it. And he wants to He wants to win. He wants to take this team to a next level. And for whatever reason, they've had the pieces last couple years with injuries and different things. They just haven't taken that next step. But no, nah, I'm not buying it. Not buying it. All right, Lou. Uh, Denver head coach Mike Malone just signed a contract extension. It'll make him one of the highest paid coaches in the league. You buying Mike Malone as the best coach, one of the best? Where are you putting him? Well, I'm gonna buy some of it. I ain't gonna buy the whole thing. I, I think, I think great coaches are just as they're, what makes great coaches is the talent that you have on your basketball team. He has the MVP. He has a lot of guys that can play basketball to get him over a lot of humps and get him paid. And so I'm gonna buy some of it. But I like I like Monty Williams. I like Coach Pop down in San Antonio. But for me, I like T. Lou with the Clippers. But Great coaching to me, it goes as far as the talent can get you. So I'm buying some of it. I think he's one of the top coaches in the league. Um, the best, who knows? It goes with your talent. Yeah, I'm buying it. And after watching him at the parade, bro, he was so lit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I text Jamie Bickerstaff after. I'm like, yo, this guy, Mike Malone, is a He definitely legend. made a fan. He made a fan of me. Oh, by, I, by the I became he such a, a fan, fan of me, just yeah. watching him party. And then obviously you look I at everything. I kind of want to have a drink with the dude. Yeah, I think I will have a drink with the guy. <laughs> but yeah, I'm hyped for him. I mean, you, like the coaches he said, you throw in Spo, Mike, the things Mike Malone, you, oh, can't, yeah. you can't look past that. The way he's taken Denver now to a household name, always a favorite, you know, just coming off a champion. Championship. Again, you get rewarded by winning. He's made this franchise a winning organization now, and they're at the top of their game. They do have Jokic, which he's blessed with. Again, you know, hmm. you can't talk about situations for players. Coaches are on the same thing right now. You know, you can you can inherit a very very good team, which a lot of these coaches do, or you can inherit a shitty situation and be fired in three years and just never get your coaching your head coaching career off, taken off. So, I think he deserves it. I think he's great, and I, again, I think he's that personality where of Mike Brown, where people like him. People People like being around for him. People want to leave it all on the floor for him. Chandler, Raptors guard uh, Dennis Schroeder was upset that the Celtics challenged to play late in the fourth quarter. Said, up 30. You're not supposed to challenge nothing. You won. It's three minutes left. You shouldn't disrespect us like that. Hmm. I love unwritten rules. That Are you want. buying that? I mean, I, I, it's it's I I think it's a little I think it's a little disrespectful. I think it's a little lame. I think it, the game's over, right? Like you're up 30, so I see what he's saying. But also, this is a young head coach. This guy is trying to prove to his team we're not taking any plays off. We're playing through the whistle. So he's got his whole side of things. But yeah, if I'm Dennis Schroeder, if I'm the Raptors, I think it's a little lame that he did that when the game's so far out of reach. Lou, you didn't agree with that. Interesting. I like that. Uh, all right. Jamal Crawford said he would average really high 20s as a starter in the league. Are you buying that? I need more context before I buy that. <laughs> I, I, I just need more context. We old. So are we talking about in our primes or are we talking about tonight if we go put our shoes on and go out and compete? So I, I don't know. Obviously, Jamal Crawford, is he's a guy that can score a lot of, lot of points. I think the only way that the new game um, – 
we struggled with the new game is the new foul rules. You know, we were, we were getting a lot of our stuff from fouls being created with the foul rules, and they've taken some of that away. And so can he go out, can he go out and go get a 20 and go get some 20s? I'm sure he can, but I, I don't know. I don't, I don't have the context. So to answer the question, I'm not buying. <laughs> not buying. Do you guys ever think about what you would average if you played in today's game? I mean, if I had a up? game tonight, it would be ugly. But if I had, like yeah. he said, if it was in my prime and we were taking the average close to 15 points in my career, <laughs> taking like eight shots a game. Imagine if we had the freedom and could unload six to nine. If I'm taking 10 threes, I'm making four or five of them. That's 12, 15 points a game right there. So I understand what he's saying, how the system, it's played different. You're playing faster. People are scoring more points. So obviously that means guys are going to average more points. I understand that. But yeah, I think... Us in our prime, getting the rep, playing 30 minutes a game. If I mean, I'm taking yeah. 15 shots, I'm averaging to over 20 points a game. I've had a few 20-point averages, a few seasons, so I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I feel like right now you can still go and get buckets. Yeah, I, I right? Just, I get a couple. Right now, I don't I think I'm making it through layup lines. I hadn't broke a sweat I, I don't think you months. are either, Chandler. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. <laughs> yeah, no problem. You're sweating just sitting there. It's weird. <laughs> um, we're going to take a quick break right now. We'll go back. We'll wrap things up with a little prop party. Run it, run it back. <laughs> How dare you come? Run it back. Yeah. Run it all. Run it back. Yeah, yeah. Run it all. Oh, we got some Wizards fun videos right now. Uh, Jordan Poole throwing the ball off the glass for a Kyle Kuzma dunk. It's awesome, except for they're down 21 at the moment. Hey, uh, Chandler? <laughs> yeah, this think? is this is corny. It's bad optics, fellas. Yeah. Oof. Just take the two points, take the layup, get back on D. That's that's not that's not what you do. If I'm cool, I'm blowout. grabbing that, bringing it down, and laying it. In. Yeah, get the rebound. Go yeah, I'm not I'm not being a part of that. You don't want to do this in that situation. Bad optics. Not a good look. Well. I'm glad you thought that because there's another Wizards video we can show you right now. I love when a team is forced to play four on five because one guy's doing this uh, <laughs> cool. all the way back down. What, what do you like? What what do you do if you're the <laughs> Wizards and your two best players are these guys? Uh, you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen, and they're both extremely talented, right? They're both yeah. can go and score points. It's just I don't I don't see the long game here. I don't know what they're and I love Zach Leonsis, the son of the owner over there, but these these guys need they need help. They need more talent, they need more vets, they need more players, because I don't I don't really see the future here. But these guys they can go get buckets. But it's just play I also you, you know I hate the rip I hate this. Mm -hmm. Every single time there's a call, you see players do this. This dude literally ran to the bench to do it and gave up a bucket, which is never good. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't know about the play here. All right, we got a minute to do our prop parties. Chandler, you're up first. Go. Okay, let's stay hot. I got the uh, Philadelphia 76ers, I believe. Yes, money line. And I got Mavs money line, which I told Conrad I wanted the do. points. But either way, Ugh. I'll take money line. It's an easier bet. Yeah, you know what? Lou's our money line guy, Lou. What do you have? Yeah, I, I like to take a gamble. I'm, if I'm going to gamble, I'm going I'm to take some chances. So I like Spurs money line tonight at OKC. I like them getting a big win on the road. And I also like the Clippers. I don't I don't see this group going 0-5 to start. So I'm Oof. hedging my bets on that Whoa. big win on the that, road at Denver. for the Clippers. Yes. Yikes. You are in season tournament. Are you insane? Um, I got Anthony Edwards, uh, fav favorite of the show, to score 30 or more and Halliburton to score 20 or more. I like both of these. Um, and then, yeah, we've got the courts to look at tonight. I feel like Oof. people Can't hate wait. them. <laughs> it seems to be a distraction. That's fine. That does it for us today. See y'all tomorrow. Run it back, yeah. Run it all. Run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it all. Run it back. Run it all. Run it back. Run it all.